What's up my friends, welcome back. This will be another short video because all I want to show you is the soldering station. This uses those T12 iron tips. Now this is not the best soldering station on the market, but it only costs 38 euros right now. So I've got this station from Banggood to test it and it turns out it is a very good product. I mean it doesn't have a hot air gun or the power like my soldering station, my Ihua that I'm using for a very long time, but for this price it is a very good product. I'm pretty sure that this one it is better than those very cheap soldering irons. Besides, it uses these T12 iron tips that I've used in my past projects, and these are pretty good as well. It is very powerful, it could reach up to 480 degrees, and very important, it is very fast. Just in a couple of seconds you could reach maximum temperature and start soldering. Besides, these iron tips are very cheap, just a couple of euros. So if you want a new shape or a new one, you could get that very cheap. Ok, so I'm not saying that this is the best soldering station for you. But if you have a low budget, I'm pretty sure that this is the perfect one. In this video, I'll test it out, I'll open it to see what we have inside and give my final opinion. I'm also preparing another giveaway. So at the end of this video, I'll give one away for you guys. So stay tuned for that. And remember, before we start, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell for future videos. Also, thanks to all my patrons for the support. So, let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. When you buy and receive this product, this is what you get. The soldering case, the soldering handle, a T12 tip and the power cable. That's all you get. Now we plug the handle here on this connector and it has a small bump inside, so you can place it backwards or in the wrong way. Now plug the power cord on the back of the case and turn it on and we can see the OLED screen showing the menu. It will say error till you insert the T12 iron tip. So I fit that inside of the handle. In my case I had to push a little bit for the tip to get inside and I was a little bit afraid to break it. But it's made to go almost all the way inside so don't worry. Ok so the iron starts and heats up to the preset value which in this case is 300 degrees. Now if I push the rotor encoder I can set the temperature and it goes from 150 degrees up to 480 degrees which is the maximum for the T12 tip. But now if I long press the rotor encoder for a few seconds, I enter a main menu. Now here we can set a lot of stuff. I can see it even has an RTC or a real time clock, so we have the time on the front menu, and that's pretty nice. Ok, you could set the sleep mode. You could select the type of tip that you are using, you can even put a password for the station, enable or disable the buzzer sound. Select the language but it is only English or Chinese. You can set the time, select the temperature steps when you're increasing the set point and some other settings. But when you're not in the main menu, on the front panel, when you rotate the knob to the left or to the right, you could change between three modes. Standby, set and boost. And you could set three different temperature values for each of these modes, so you could switch between temperature faster. On this front panel you could see the selected mode and the set temperature on the top corner and the real temperature with big numbers. We could also see the power percentage that is applied to the iron tip, the time but also the room temperature on the bottom right corner since the chip inside also has a temperature sensor. Ok so that's it for the menu, let's see the case. It is made out of metal and it is quite small and also have some small rubber feet. In the back, next to the power plug, we have an on and off switch, but also a fuse for protection. Ok, so I take out 4 screws on the front part and 4 more on the back part. Now I can open it and see what we have inside. Ok, at first sight we can see the controller board with the OLED display here. 2 transformers, a big one and another small one, and 2 heat sinks with some components. One of these components is a Schottky rectifier and the other one is a power MOSFET. We also have a huge capacitor at the input and here, as you can see, we have a photocoupler to insulate the high voltage from the low voltage part on the PCB. I can also see another internal fuse soldered to the PCB. Ok, so now this is the 20M60 power MOSFET and I thought this is the one that controls the power applied to the heater. But that's not true, since between the power board and the controller board, there are only the supply wires. Ok, so now on the controller board, I can see an STM32 microcontroller, that will control everything. 
I can see some voltage regulators and two more ICs. This one here is the MOSFET for the power control. It seems a little bit small for the job, but the datasheet tells us that it could deliver up to 30 amps continuously or 50 amps post. Ok, so this other IC is just an EEPROM, so I guess that there is no real time clock chip. But I've looked it up and it seems that the STM32 has a real time clock mode, where it only draws 300 nanoamps, so that's how the station gets the time and the date. It also has a temperature sensor. On the PCB we have this cell battery that will allow the real-time clock to keep the time even if the station is not plugged. For some notifications the board has this small buzzer and that's pretty much it. The thermocouple is inside of the T12 tip, so the temperature sensing is made inside of the tip itself. So I close back the case and now let's make some small tests. First I will do the speed test. I set the station to 480 degrees which is the maximum value. Then I power it off and I make sure that the iron tip is cold. Then I power up the station and when it starts I also start a timer so we could see how much it takes to reach the maximum temperature. So as you can see it took only 12 seconds to get to 400 degrees so that's quite fast and I can already melt solder and start soldering. Now using an external thermocouple I check the real temperature. And as you can see the station reaches the top temperature before the real value, so the exterior is getting hot slower or the station is not showing the real value. Also the maximum temperature with the external thermocouple never reached 480 degrees, only 454, so we have about 30 degrees of difference. Ok so now I test if I can melt huge balls of solder and it seems to have no problems with that at all. In a few seconds I could melt this ball of solder. Now I had some problems soldering the gate of this MOSFET to the PCB, but after a few seconds the solder got melted with no problems. I've also tested if the cable is heat resistant, and yes, it seems to be made out of heat resistant silicon, and can get burned. Ok so in overall it seems like a pretty decent product. I've only used it for a few days, so I can't say how long it will last, and if the electronics quality is good enough. I will post more results after a few months. You could also try different shapes for the soldering tips and you could buy those for 3 or 4 dollars and just plug them into the handle and start soldering. The metal case is very strong, but the soldering handle seems kind of crappy and made out of cheap plastic. The plastic is heat resistant, but I would really like to have some more quality. Ok guys, so that's it for this short review. I'll put some links below if you want to buy one as well. Also for the giveaway, below this video you will find a Gleam link. So follow that link to enter the giveaway and 2 weeks from now I will announce the winner. Enter every day for more entries, meaning more chances to win. So I wish you good luck to everyone. So if you enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe and activate the notification bell for future videos. Also click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. And remember that your help on Patreon means a lot for me and will keep this kind of videos going. So thanks again and see you later guys.